Unconsciousness is an abnormal state in which a person is not alert and not fully responsive to their surroundings. Unlike when a person is asleep, someone who is unconscious cannot respond meaningfully to any outer stimuli or provocation. They cannot move or turn their head if in distress or cough to clear their throat and they are totally unaware of both self and external surroundings. The severe form of altered consciousness, known as coma, results due to gross impairment of both half of brain and a structure that is important to maintain consciousness, known as ascending reticular activating system. Physiotherapy plays an important role in ICU in the management of unconscious patients and is responsible for aiding in arousal from coma, respiratory management by improving lung volume and oxygenation, and prevention and treatment of deconditioning of muscles. Hello, Namaste viewers. Welcome to our channel Physio Healer. Today's video is about assessment of unconscious patients in neurological disorders. Experimental investigations divide consciousness into two parts. One is content of consciousness and the other is state of level of consciousness. In content of consciousness, the person is awake and responsive but is unaware of themselves or their action or environment. For example, they will be unaware about feeling of pain or taste of their food. On the other hand, state of level of consciousness is the degree of alertness or arousal. It includes coma or the vegetative state, sleep or drug abuse. Anatomically, the central reticular formation of the brainstem is responsible for arousal, whereas content of consciousness depends on activities of cerebral cortex and thalamus. Thus, the complete consciousness requires an intact activity of cerebral hemisphere and brainstem. Acute lesion in both these areas can result into altered consciousness. And if the lesion is slowly developing, it has to be extensive enough to suppress the consciousness. Staying immobile in intensive care unit for a long period of time can have many adverse effects. It increases chance of infection and compromise cardiac and respiratory functions. Physical inactivity leads to wasting of muscles and cause generalized weakness. It can also cause many secondary complications such as deep vein thrombosis or pressure ulcers. Physical therapy during critical care help to speed up the recovery process. The purpose of assessment of a neurological patient is to determine the state of level of consciousness and to identify or exclude any systemic disease known to cause disturbance of consciousness. Much of examination in unconscious patient is carried out through observation, which is done repeatedly. Degree of altered consciousness must be decided on the first visit to ensure proper recording of progress on future visits. Five different levels of consciousness have been identified. Fully conscious, lethargy, obtundation, stupor and coma. Fully consciousness is a state of alertness or awareness and patient will be oriented to time, place and person. Alert patient will respond fully and appropriately when spoken to or to any other external stimuli. Lethargy refers to general slowing of motor process. The lethargic patient appears drowsy but when questioned, they can open their eyes and respond briefly. Patient fall asleep easily if not continually stimulated. In obtundation, the patient is difficult to arouse from sleeping and once aroused, they appear confused. Interactions are usually unproductive and the patient slowly responds and demonstrates little interest about self and environment. Stupor refers to state of semi-consciousness. Here the patient will appear to be completely unconscious when left alone. On vigorous stimulation, the patient can be aroused sufficiently to resist painful stimuli or can be awakened for a short period to answer simple questions. No satisfactory cooperation is obtained and as soon as uh, stimulus ceases, the patient goes back to original unconscious state. Akinetic mutism is a variety where the patient lies motionless and speechless, but with eyes opened as if they are awake. 
they are responsive to stimuli but never achieve to say any words or talk. A kinetic mutism occurs in association with lesion around the third ventricle or in subacute encephalopathies. In coma, the patient is deeply unconscious. Their eyes remain closed and cannot be aroused with any kind of stimulation. The patient is ventilator dependent and there are no sleep awake cycle. The deeper degree of unconsciousness are common in lesion at pontine and low brainstem levels. True coma, however, is time limited. Patient usually falls into a vegetative state characterized by return of irregular sleep awake cycles and normalization of vegetative functions like respiration, digestion and blood pressure control. The Glasgow Coma Scale is a widely used tool to identify level of consciousness. Various grades of eye opening, verbal and motor response can be recorded on the scale to provide standard results with minimum errors. Assessment of patients who appear to be confused can be done by testing in three dimensions, time, place and person. For time, ask the knowledge of the day, date, month, year and how long the patient has been in the present place. For place, ask where they are at the moment, what building, what town and what country. For person, ask about themselves, their work and their age. Finally, ask whether they, do, they know their family members or the doctors or the hospital staff. For general observation, check the color and condition of the skin. Paler and sweating may occur in syncope, severe blood loss or hypoglycemia. Suffusion of the face is seen in hypertension, alcoholism or during hemorrhagic stroke. Cyanosis of face and neck occurs during respiratory obstruction, epilepsy or some vascular insufficiencies. Cyanosis of limbs is seen in peripheral circulatory stagnation or severe coma. For postural observation, check for neck retraction that usually indicates meningeal irritation. Opisthotonus posturing may occur in severe meningeal irritation and tetanus in adults. Patients who lies with head drooped to one side, one upper limb pronated and adducted and one lower limb externally rotated is indicative of acute hemiplegia. In decerebrate attitude, all limbs are extended, upper limb pronated and feet plantar flexed. It occurs in lesion of the midbrain between superior colliculus and pons. Decorticate positioning is seen in extensive lesions at the level of basal nuclei or in between basal nuclei and cortex. Here, patient's upper limbs are flexed and lower limbs are extended. Check for signs of meningeal irritation by testing neck rigidity with tests like Koenig's and Brudzinski sign. Keep a constant lookout for convulsions, rigors and tremors during your therapy sessions. It has to be notified immediately to the medical staff. Keep a note of type of breathing or any change in it during your therapy. Chinese strokes breathing where there is alternating hyperapnea and apnea can be seen in bilateral cerebral or high brainstem lesions or during metabolic dysfunction. Shallow rapid breathing occurs in hemorrhage and hypoglycemia. Examination and constant monitoring of vital function is of utmost importance in the entire time you are with your patient and any dramatic change must be reported and documented immediately. So that was brief about general assessment of an unconscious patient. Share your views, questions or suggestions in the comment box and share and subscribe and like the video if you found it useful. See you next time. Bye bye.